Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Well, good for you, Pat. Just keep it up. Now, what's that mean? Two assignments in one week? Fine. Oh, one week and one day. So, I still like it. What goes this time? Johnny, how old are you? Just exactly 30... Huh? Why? Still young enough to remember how you felt and acted when you were a young punk, huh? Sure. But I hope you were a better sort than the one we have to deal with in this matter. Uh... And yet, on the other hand... Well, you know the saying, it takes a crook to catch a crook. Huh? So maybe we'd be better off if you'd been an A number one delinquent when you were a pup. Uh, do you mind telling me what you're yammering about? But I suppose you're a good boy. Well, I was no mama's boy, if that's what you mean. Oh, I mean no real trouble with the law. No stretch in a reform school, no hoodlum gang, no good contacts, experience, Pat, that sort of thing. Pat. Oh, I guess not. It, it's kind of too bad, though. Uh, uh, you mean if I had a nice black record, I'd be just right for this, uh, this whatever you have in mind. And yet, on the other hand, Oh, Johnny... come on, come on, Pat. Start making sense, will you? Well? Yes. All right. All right. Culpepper Walker, Mono Guarantee Insurance Company. Uh-huh. Do you know him? In their office in Little Rock, yeah. Good. Fly on out and see him, will you, Johnny? Because of some trouble with some, some kid? That's right. Okay. Just a kid, Johnny. But if what Walker says about him is true... If you expect to get anywhere with this boy... Yeah? You'd better take along a pair of brass knuckles, a length of chain, maybe a switchblade knife... Oh, that kind, huh? That kind. A real bad one. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Mono Guarantee Insurance Company Little Rock office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the bad one matter. Expense account item one, two bucks for a cab to Bradley Field. Item two, 8110 airfare to New York to Little Rock, Arkansas. The plane had left New York at 6 p.m. At 8.50 Central Time, we set down at Little Rock Municipal Airport. There have been a lot of changes since the year 1772 when a guy named Bernard de la Harpe stopped here and tagged the place after an outcropping of rock on the south bank of the Arkansas River. Yeah, it's an interesting town with its modern air-conditioned buildings of chrome and glass, its busy streets and busy people. And at the same time, its beautiful residential section, fine homes, plenty of trees and gardens and hedges and lawns that stay a lush green throughout the year. Not far away are well-cultivated farms and dense forests. And along the river, lots of rich bottomland, much of it loaded with cotton. Any kind of crime just doesn't seem right in this area. As soon as I got settled, I called Culpepper Walker, made a date with him, and then early the next morning met him at his office where he got down to business. No, no, Dollar, not right here in town, but in one of the outlying precincts, I guess you call it. A section they call Milltown. Oh, I see. And his name is Pete McGuire. Works in a cotton mill. He's 18, 19 years old. And he's the only one knows who killed Mr. Briley. Briley? Ambrose W. Briley, client of ours. Insured for near $50,000. And his business partners in the mill are also clients. Very important ones. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened? And Monday night of last week, Mr. Briley was driving along with a payroll for the cotton mill, like I said, over in Milltown. That's east of here. Yeah? Somebody ran his car off the road, bashed in his head, and took the payroll, some $17,000 in cash. He was carrying all that money around alone at night? Well, he'd taken it out of the, the bank here in town just before the bank closed. We started out for the mill. But he'd had some trouble with his car with one of the front wheels, and he had to stop and have it fixed. By the time he got on the road again, it was nearly dark. Well, tell me, you sure he didn't just swerve off the road by himself? No, he was shoved off by another car. Tire marks, the the skid marks, showed just how it happened. Chief Andy Fisher of the Milltown Police Department checked that out. I see. Well, uh, could the police identify the killer's car by those tire marks? No, sir. And that's where the uh, McGuire boy comes in. How do you mean? I mean, he was caught running away from the scene. Not more than, well, could have been more than one or two minutes after it happened. Uh Caught by whom? Well, police car. Chief himself was in it. Just checking the beat out there. He chased the kid down and brought him in for questioning. Well? Nothing. 
Nothing? What do you mean, nothing? All he could get out of that tough, young punk was absolutely nothing. Well, then, what am I supposed to do if the police haven't been able to get anything out of him? Well, you could try, can't you? But it's a matter for the police. If it wasn't for Mr. Bryal, his partners. Now, what have they got to do with it? Their insurance. Insurance on the cotton mill. Thousands of dollars in premiums every year. So? Well, I can't afford to lose it, Dollar. Well, so why should I... And they're the ones, his partners, who insisted that I get you out here to investigate. Oh. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Dollar? Johnny? Okay, Culpepper, I'll see what I can do. (laughs) Item three, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car, and I drove over to Milltown to the one-room police headquarters in the city hall. Yes, sir, Mr. Johnny. I was right there at the scene of the murder in my prowl car, right after it happened. Oh? How come, Chief? Man mm, at the bank had told me about Mr. Briley's car trouble. Getting dark, light rain falling, and Mr. Briley toting all that money. Well, I thought I'd better make sure he'd gotten to the mill all right, so I started out that way. But what happens? All right, what happens? I got there to Spring Road crossing, and there's his car in the ditch, and another car turning away up the road. Oh. And this young Pete McGuire trying to get his motorcycle started and get away from there. Kind of seen me arriving on the scene. So when I found Mr. Briley's a dying there in his car, I grabbed the kid. Yeah, if only I'd have had sense enough to follow up that other car. Now, you're sure this Pete McGuire didn't do it? Well, of course he said he didn't. And that was before he clammed up like now when he won't say anything. And he also asked me, didn't I see that other car that left a couple of minutes before I arrived? Well, Chief, that doesn't prove... And there was another thing, Mr. Johnny. You could still see by the tracks how that other car had shoved old Mr. Briley's car off the road. Doc Hamper come along about that time. He could you read those? Could you read those tire marks? No, sir. But Doc and I could still read the tracks from that Pete McGuire cycle. Uh-huh. So he come along after the other car left. All right, I see. But he must have seen who was in that other car, so he knows who did it. Oh, well, now wait. Oh, that I'm doesn't... sure of it, Mr. Johnny, because of what Mr. Briley said. What he said? When? Well, laying there in his car, dying, thinking the Doc was Pete standing there. And he kept saying, oh, no. And Peter, you saw, you saw it. You tell him, boy. You tell him who did it. You saw it, boy, so you tell him. You tell him. Yes, sir, Miss Johnny. Over and over again, he said it. And then he died. I see. So he knew that Pete McGuire saw who killed him and robbed him. Well, maybe. Ma- of course he did. No good kid. Why is he no good, Chief? Why? Well, how should I know why, Mr. Johnny? Except that he wouldn't go to school. He was a town bum. His ma never knew where he was at. The most work he ever done was pushing a pool cue. Oh, well, now, most kids... That boy has been a troublemaker all of his life. Ten, fifteen times I tried to get him to send him to reform school. Hey, you really don't like him, do you? Nothing but trouble out of him. And I take it he doesn't exactly go for you. Huh? Maybe, uh, maybe a cop hater even, huh? Yes, sir. That's right. A cop hater. Just like his old man was. Like, like his old man taught him before I had to kill him one night in a robbery. Pete's old man? They ought to send this cheap punk up to the pen. But first I got to find out who killed Mr. Briley. Uh, of course you're holding him, Chief. On what? Material witness, withholding evidence. There, there must be some way. Oh, with him claiming he's blacked out and don't remember anything? So that... Percy Van Ashworthy, Tetweller upstairs. Uh, Percy Van who? What? The, the public defender. Got the judge to release Pete McGuire on his own recognizing or whatever it is. Recognizance. Yes, sir. So McGuire's out and free as a bird. But if he tries to run up before I can get him up before the jury... Oh, Chief, lots of but kids. But don't you worry, Mr. Johnny. Everybody on that jury, my friends. So they'll lock him up, all right. Yeah, I see. Be a kind of revenge, huh? Because he won't cooperate with you. Now, look, Mr. Dodd. Or maybe just, uh, just because he's a cop hater. Where will I find this Percy Van, this public defender? Upstairs in his office. But do you think he could get anything out of that kid? Well, now, as the kid's defender, do you think he'll tell you if he did? But if he did and you find out, you got to tell me. Yeah, we'll see about that. Mr. Johnny, I am not going out of here with a punk kid making me look like a fool. Uh Uh-huh. All these years, working to keep order here in Middletown, having to retire a few months from now. Yeah, and going out no richer than when I was walking a beat. 
So maybe I'll have to live with some of my relatives somewhere out west. But you think I'm going to leave with this kid making a fool out of me? I'll see you later. To paraphrase Gilbert and Sullivan, an announcer's lot is not a happy one. Well, not always. Want to know why? Tell you why. Take this safe driving business. Do you have any idea how many times my confreres and I have begged on bended microphone to have begged people not to kill themselves on the highways? Now, once and for all, let's get together on this. Let's understand one another. Unless you want to pack a frustrated announcers on your conscience, slow down and curb highway carnage. If you don't care about yourself, at least have a little consideration for us. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the bad one matter. Percy Van Ashworthy Tedweiler was hardly what his name might have implied. And, uh, call me Ted, will you, Johnny? I don't like the name Percy any more than I imagine you do. Uh, yeah, sure, Ted. Now, as I was saying... In spite of the chief's feelings about him and all the trouble he had with Pete's father, well, put it this way. That poor ignorant kid has had the odds against him ever since the day he was born. His father was no good. So I understand. His mother was an alcoholic. And because he's always been a stupid little runt, the other kids always bullied him. Oh? Yes, and when they'd pull a job, none of them very serious, I'll grant you, they'd leave him behind so that he'd be the one to get caught for their mischief and petty thieveries. He didn't dare peach on them or they'd beat him up. And the chief never let up on him. So he's hated cops, hated anything that had to do with law and order. Yeah. Which includes you. Yes, I'm afraid so, in spite of my attempts to get close to him. And even you haven't been able to get him to talk. I've tried everything, Johnny, from sugar-coated kindness to the worst threats I could think of. Everything short of Chief Fisher's heavy-handed methods. Oh, you mean the good old third degree, the rubber hose tactics and things like that? Well, of course, the chief denies it. Oh, sure he does. And don't forget, I'm the one who got the judge to let him out on his own recognizance. Why? In the hope he'd open up to me. But to Pete, I'm still the law. Just as much as Chief Fisher and Judge Thurber. Oh, weren't you taking a big chance on his running away? But he hasn't. Yeah, I wonder why. Won't do any good to ask him. Believe me, won't do any good to ask him anything. Oh. Look out there, out the window. Here he comes now. Pete McGuire? Yes. Okay, give me a try. What? Yeah, look, uh, don't tell him who I am, what I'm here for. Johnny, if I thought you could do any good... Believe me, I can... But don't you see, unless he talks, the jury, all of them friends of Chief Fisher... And if he tries Look, to run... Now, now, listen, I'm no friend of yours. See, I'm a... Maybe I'm a troublemaker, a con artist. What? Yeah, you want me out of town. You, uh, you've threatened to have me locked up if I... Hey, wait, here he comes. But, Johnny, I'm afraid I don't... Yeah, understand. okay. You just try and do it, see? I got a right to make a living, and unless you've got some formal charge against me... All right, now, Mr. Tetweiler. Pete, come in. Now, listen, Tetweiler. You, you sit down, Dollar. Sit down. Yeah, make me. If I have to, I... No, no, Pete. Pete, do you want to talk now? Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir, I sure do. Well, if that's all you got to say to me... No, Dollar. Stay, I'm not through with you. That's what you think. Well, Pete? Public defender, huh? That's right. And that's why You're I tried to... You're all trying to trick me, is all. What? So you got me out of the clink, huh? That's right. So now you think I don't know I'm being followed all the time by that chief of police or one of his men all the time wherever I go... And I think I know why, sir. But the chief promised me, Pete. Yeah, the chief promised you. You believe that dirty cop? I tell you, Mr. Tedweiler, you get him off my tail. Now, 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 listen, Pete. And don't you see, if you just tell me what you know about the murder of old Mr. Brierly, Pete? Pete, please, boy. Pete, listen to me. If you're trying to protect someone by holding Did back... Did I say I was? I say I really know anything. Well, the chief says you do. Well? Oh, Pete, for the... Look, you're in trouble, boy. I'll get out of it my own way. No one's really proved you didn't kill him. 
So unless you tell me what you know, you... You just keep that cop off my tail. Hey, wait a minute, kid. Pete, come back here. See you later, Tiff. No, Dollar, come back here. That's right. Hey, wait a minute, kid. Hey, Pete, your name? What's it to you? So you don't like the cops either, huh? Me either? Got a tail on you, huh? You want to learn how to shake a tail from an expert? Expert, huh? Yeah, that's right, me. He called you Dollar, huh? Well, that's a good name. Sounds like money. Oh, yeah, baby, yeah. Maybe plenty of money. And uh, maybe I can use some help in this burg, huh? Help in what? Why not just wait. Talk here in City Hall with the cops I able to show. Hey, you got a car? I got a cycle. All right, good. I got a car, a good one. So tell me where to meet you, huh? You don't care if the cops are following me, if they follow you too? Uh, you think I couldn't shake them? Maybe. All right, you head for wherever you want me to meet you, see? Now, And listen. if I spot somebody following Pete, I'll shake him so easy. You sure of that? Sure, I'm sure. Then I'll meet you wherever you say, huh? Because if they find out where I'm hiding out, uh, you sure you won't tell them? Look, I promise I give you my word. Well, uh, Seven Mile Road, out beyond Spring Road at the railroad crossing. Yeah. You better hide your car. There are lots of trees. Yeah, yeah. Now, you walk in the, the gully on this side of the tracks. Then you see a little tool shack on the side. I'll be there. Okay, okay. I don't know how soon, Pete. If we're tail, I mean, I may have to lead him away. But I'll see you, huh? We were tailed, all right. And I could see by whom. And I wondered. To keep him from following Pete, I had to let the boy go on ahead. It was nearly an hour later then by the time I got to the tool shack. And I thought I'd lost the man who was tailing me. There was no padlock in the heavy hasp on the door of the tool shack. So y'all come on in, Mr. Johnny. Johnny? That's right. Johnny Dollar, the big eye. Oh, I see. So they brung you here to try to make me talk, huh? The insurance company, Pete. Not the law, not the police. No? No. I know all about you, Mr. Johnny. I long admire you for a long time. I hear that you was coming here. Oh, I hear lots of things, Mr. Johnny. And I hear you coming here. I, I figure maybe you can... You can... <laughs> Help you, Pete. But unless I know whatever it is you know about that murder. Maybe... Maybe I can tell you. Oh, come on, Pete, try. But I couldn't tell the police. i tell any of them. i tell that defender you're talking to. They don't believe me. You think they believe me over that chief, Miss Johnny? You, you think they do? Oh, Pete, you must have a pretty sour idea of justice. And that chief... That chief, he run this town, and he liked to kill me, like he killed my old man. He don't like him. Only he killed me because he'd say he'd catch me trying to run away. Now, Pete, you listen and to me. And I don't really know who killed that Mr. Briley, but I think I know, and that's why I don't dare say what I think to that chief or anybody. But when you saw the car, the killer's car, heading away from the place. But, Miss Johnny... The only one I see is the police car when it comes from the direction of the mill. So from the I... direction of the mill? So I really don't know. But that chief say I do. And if I try and answer the oh, questions... Oh, wait, wait, Pete. The trick questions. Like that chief try and make me answer when he come there and see me there. Pete, listen. And I tell you, they only let me loose so they can make me try and run away. Then that chief, he can kill me, and nobody see it's wrong. Wait a minute. And he'd do it, too. And Ted that's Wilder. why I got to hide He himself said anybody. that. Yes, Dollar. The chief had me let him go in the hopes he'd have confidence in me. Talk to me. The chief had let him go. Sure. Maybe it was to get an excuse to kill him if he ran. And that other car, Pete saw another car... So how would the chief know one had left the scene a couple of minutes before he got there? And there were other things. You think I'm going to retire with this kid making a fool out of me? Pride of an old man who's been running the town. Yeah, and going away no richer than when I was walking a beat. Oh, but he'd be rich enough with that 17,000 payroll. Sure, 
In the meantime, he knew that Pete McGuire, in his ignorance of justice and his fear, didn't dare to say what he suspected, didn't dare accuse this man he thought would kill him with impunity. Yeah, and that everyone connected with the law was against him. They're all against me, and so I want to live, Mrs. Johnny. I can't tell nobody, not even you. Yeah. Maybe you don't need to, Pete. And besides, I only think I know who killed Mr. Briley. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. As sure as I... Huh? Hey, Pete, that smell. Coal oil. Yeah, kerosene. Hey, look. Soaking in around this door. It's locked. Somebody's jammed something into that hasp out there. Mr. Johnny, fire! Now they're smoking this fire. You're right. That winds is locked in here. We'll be burned alive. Yes, keep talking, Pete. He forgot the hinges are inside this door. What's it? Keep talking while I pull the pins out of those things. We die in here. We're going to be cooked alive in here, Mrs. Here's Johnny. one. We're going to burn up in Here's here, Mrs. Johnny. Other. We're going to be cooked alive. Now, come on, Pete. Come on. Mrs. Johnny, we're going to die. All right, Chief. Mr. Donald. Yeah, that's right. I, uh... See the shack on fire. Yeah, well, you set this fire. As for the cover up for having killed Mr. Briarley. This boy told you that. I'll kill him, too. Oh, no, you won't, Chief. Put away that gun. I'll kill you, too. Oh, no. Chief! You miss you, Peter? Uh, I'm all right, sir. Oh. So you killed old man Briarley? <laughs> Mr. Dollar. And if this boy did know. But until you were sure he did, and you kept him too scared to talk. All right, Chief, you want to write and sign a confession? But if my people found out, I Or didn't... shall I use this gun of yours on no, you? No, 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 please. Be justice, Just... though, wouldn't it? Well, no. Oh, yes, sir. I'll, I'll sign the confession. Okay, then. Up on your feet. Up on your feet. <laughs> yeah, pretty smart. Using that... Poor ignorant kid as a means to keep any suspicion away from himself. But believe me, not smart enough. Expense account total, including hotel expenses, the rental car, and the trip back to Hartford, two thirty-one twenty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Catching a cold. Well, I guess most everyone knows that the smart thing to do when you feel a cold coming on is to get plenty of rest. But there are some days when no matter how miserable you feel, you just can't stay in bed. And if tomorrow is one of those big days and your cold is complicated by constipation, well, that's when you'll appreciate X-Lax most. You see, X-Lax has the qualities doctors consider most important in a laxative. It's gentle, effective, and close to natural acting. Taken at bedtime, X-Lax won't disturb sleep. It works effectively, overnight, to help you toward your normal regularity. And X-Lax is so close to natural acting, there's no upset or discomfort. So gentle, it's even recommended for children. So, if tomorrow's a big day for you, if you have a cold and need a laxative too, take X-Lax, a laxative with the qualities a doctor would recommend. X-Lax. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the double deal matter. And I give you one guess about who comes out at the short end of it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Larry Dobkin, James McCallion, Forrest Lewis, Russell Thorson, and Sam Edwards. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. You're tuned to Radio 590 WROW in Albany, New York.